Hello, hello, and welcome to The Connecting Point. I am Dr. Marcy, your facilitator for this discussion table today, where creators connect, we inspire here, we share our ideas and stories to hopefully transform the world through raw and edited talk. And today I am joined by Sweet Diana Nicole. <laughs> I, I her, that background is so beautiful back there. Thank you but so much. Diana, I have to tell the audience the connecting point before we get into the conversation. Mm -hmm. Well, everyone, the connecting point probably is only like a few weeks old. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Diana Nicole was referred to me by a mutual friend to do a project that I was desiring to do. And so she followed through, which I don't want to tell it because it's one of her areas of creativity. Um, she followed through on it and did a beautiful job. And so that is our connecting point. And I knew that the audience would enjoy hearing about you and all the avenues of creativity you have taken. So, Diana Nicole, can you tell the audience where you're from and where you are now? Uh, well, Dr. Marcy, I am born and raised. Now, this is going to blow your mind because this is rare nowadays. I am born and raised here in Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta, and, baby. Yes, yes, a Grady baby. Grady baby. <laughs> Yes, and so, um, yes, born and raised here in Atlanta, Georgia, and, um, and thank you so much for um, trusting that uh, referral. Um, um, it was such a joy to meet you, and I'm, I'm, I am I'm extremely happy to be here today. Well, you know, Diana, um, one thing about me, I can discern someone's spirit. And, and it only takes one hug. <laughs> so I, you know, I talked to you on the phone, but when I hugged you, I said, that's a good person. And it only takes me a while to uh, figure that out. And so I thank you for accepting the invite here and following through on the project that I can't talk about yet. <laughs> okay, Diana Nicole, the Grady baby. <laughs> what side of Atlanta did you grow up on? What side of Atlanta? Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Fulton Industrial, which technically, <laughs> yes, it's like right off of Fulton Industrial in the Carroll, um, the Carroll Heights community. Of course. Yes. 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 Uh, one reason is because I teach over in that area. Close okay. To it, off of Cascade. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Not too yeah. far at all. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So guess what I have heard about you? Well, let, first of all, <laughs> I'm, I'm excited even more now. <laughs> now, let's talk about that project. Diana Nicole has several areas of creativity, one of them being photography. Yes. And so I want you to talk a little bit about what made you go into photography. Uh, well, I've just always had a desire with the, uh, well, visual arts. Um, I kind of touch in a lot of different areas of the arts, um, but visual in terms of photography, um, I do abstract paintings as well. And so um, it just really started just trying to, you know, uh, I love beautiful things and, um, and, and I can find beauty in just about any situation, any, I mean, you know, even if you think you're not all that beautiful, I can promise you, I can tell you it about, 10 different reasons why you are. <laughs> yeah. So um, just, uh, just the love of beautiful things and trying to encourage others as well that they too are beautiful on the inside and outside. Yeah. Well, I can tell you this, she did a photo shoot for me. <laughs> and uh, she, I mean, it was absolutely amazing and professional. I, I look for that when I'm dealing with people. Yes. And um, you were professional. You were at your place on time. Mm -hmm. He even brought me a treat, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was your birthday. <laughs> it, really, it wasn't my birthday. I'm just still celebrating it. 
you know, I, <laughs> I love it. I love it though. I love it though. You know, when I reached the golden 50, I said, you know what? This is the year that I'm going to do what makes me happy. I'm going to do things. I'm going to even take risk yes. that I normally wouldn't do. Good risk, of course. <laughs> I got you. But you were a part of that. Because mm -hmm. I don't normally do that professionally. Okay. I'll do it, but not professionally. Okay. And so um, you just brought out the happy side of me, the, the side of me that a lot of people don't see, but it's in there. I like, I like to laugh. I like to have fun or whatever. I so love it. I, I really appreciate your gifting of photography. But you told me you also did graphic design, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Like flyers, you know, the more of your uh, business solutions, flyers. Um, I actually uh, do a lot of uh, work with churches um, mm -hmm. and, um, the, you know, like business cards, banners, just any of those things and branding, anything to just make you look the best, like the best you you can look uh, to the public. So, yes. Now, did you acquire this gift from childhood? Or it just grew on you? Oh, well, surprisingly, with the graphics, um, I had a friend who was a, clo a, a club promoter. Mm -hmm. And, uh, oh, I would love to watch him just make these flyers. And he was amazing. In fact, he's doing wonderful things right now mm -hmm. um, um, as, as a really, you know, reputable club promoter here in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. um, at called Fab Five Productions. But mm -hmm. at any rate... Um, he, Romeo, he taught me how to do graphics. And it was so amazing um, because I'm kind of like a fast learner, right? But it was, it was years ago. And he, um, we would, we sat down for th uh, really like three hours. <laughs> it was like three hours. And, um, and I called him on the phone a couple of times after that, but then I just kind of caught on. I, I used a, a very um, well-known system called Photoshop. Uh -huh. and, yeah, and so, um, you know, to kind of pick that up uh, along the way by way of a friend mm -hmm. was just beautiful. And, and I just enjoyed it so much. So I just kept going. So I kept going. So that that is one reason. He is one reason also why I am so... Um, uh, like, I, I really try to empower others through my gifts. So when people want to learn things, when people want to start ventures, I am a, a big advocate for trying to help others um, start ventures because I believe it just takes one step and that's yeah. to start something. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. And helping others is, to me, um, one of the most noble things you can do. Yes. Um, as a human being. Mm -hmm. And so that's another... Um, thing that I look for in people that I even want to connect with. Yes. Um, I like connecting with people who enjoy helping others. It's not anything that's a grudge. I mean, this, you know, unpleasant for them. They're not made to do it, but they really enjoy helping others. And so that's commendable that you said that. Thank you. But this is what another thing I heard about you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, is it true that you were actually a contestant on American Idol? Ooh, now, who told you that? <laughs> shame, shame, shame. Listen, <laughs> normally I would opt out of this conversation. <laughs> yes, normally I would opt out of this conversation. However, no, why? Because with Dr. Marcy, we could have. <laughs> And the funny part is that uh, I just had a conversation with someone who they didn't know that I was on American Idol. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, we're not going to have a conversation. So if we're going to have a conversation, I will have to share it with that person, <laughs> which I'm going to share. So why, why don't you want to have, that's a wonderful thing. Why don't you want to have that conversation? Well, American Idol, um, while I, I like the platform mm -hmm. in terms of, um, you know, uh, people getting their big break or opportunities mm -hmm. to, to, you know, get more exposure in their artistry, um, behind the scenes, American Idol is not 
and I'm sure that everyone pretty much knows it, uh, but what is not what it seems, mm -hmm. you know. Um, there is a big process. It's a huge process. Uh, I think it was one of the most, um, the best experiences mm -hmm. um, that I've had um, thus far in terms of learning, yeah. okay? Um, and grow, go, just going to a higher space within. And um, because when I went to American Idol, obviously you stand in the long lines yeah. and a friend of mine um, kept begging me to go. And I'm like, no, I'm not going. And I went against my own judgment. <laughs> uh. Yes. And I, but I kept saying not to go. And that's the reason why I uh, uh, sometimes am open to sharing the story because this is one of those stories that would where help somebody. I, yes, that would help somebody while at the same time, I, it, yeah. it really helped me. And it, and it actually kind of helped me start my journey um, in writing more. Um, so I, I did, from my experience, I, I um, pinned a song, uh, which is on iTunes, it's called You Better Listen. And um, that song comes from um, the space of, I heard clearly that I was not supposed to go. And I went anyway. <laughs> and um, sure enough, I, it was something that I believe now that I, 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 I was supposed to experience mm -hmm. um, just so I could learn. Mm -hmm. Listen to your higher self. You mm -hmm. already know the answers there. there. <laughs> I can't yeah. tell you how many times I've done that <laughs> in the past, you know, because you, you, especially if you're the type of person that wants to help others mm -hmm. and really want to, you know, follow through on what they're asking you to do or whatever. But since I'm older now, I don't do that so readily. <laughs> but I've been, listen, I know exactly what you're talking about. You know God yeah. said don't go. Mm. <laughs> but you know, that is why all these, all these things work together for our good anyway. Yes. Because yes. we're in his purpose. So mm. even though he told you not to go, his loving kindness <laughs> protected you. Yes. In yes. all of it. And you learned some lessons. Yes, I did. I did learn some lessons. Uh, my grandmother, who is now 96 years old, <laughs> I'll never forget being down at my grandmother's house and one of my friends called. And, um, and they were like, Larry King is looking for you. You need to call back. You need. And V103, they were, they were calling. It was so crazy because someone at V103 was really, um, you know, pushing. Like, we know this girl. This is an Atlanta girl. She's singing all around. And we know this girl is the truth or whatever. And uh, But my grandmother... 96 years old now uh, is uh, was the one who was like, no, you're not going to entertain Larry King. You're not going to do this. You're not going to do that. This is turned already left. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so um, that is okay. If I if I could take away, and I'm not going to go against what grandmother says because grandmother um, is full of wisdom. Yeah, and, yeah. And so obviously, I did not. Um, uh, push that any further mm -hmm. but now today um sometimes i i do um tell myself now what if, what if you had you know um i guess when improving yourself mm -hmm. because what a lot of people don't know about american idol excuse me is that they'll get you in there and then the producers will switch up on you and, and mm -hmm. so the producers are trying to lead you in a certain direction, direction. Yeah, and so at the time, I was not as versed in um, secular music, mm -hmm. and um, I did, I, I have a very firm classical and um, Christian foundation, mm -hmm. more sacred, and more in the sacred area, mm -hmm. and, um, and, but that was another thing that it also kind of taught me was more about, you know, just being a bit more versed, <laughs> and so I would began to, um, get coached by, you know, some of the, some of, um, some, some of the top uh, vocal producers here in Atlanta. And so they have helped me to kind of get to a, a better space, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and that now I am um, more, you know, going in the direction of, I do, I still sing church music because mm -hmm. that is just a part of me. Jesus at the center of it all. Yes, he mm -hmm, is. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, jazz and soul 
mm -hmm. I'm kind of more, you know, going in that direction now. But I still, like I said, uh, every Sunday, uh, I am happy to um, share with you that I am the um, summits in resident over at Emmanuel Family Worship Center, mm -hmm. where um, Dr. Missy Bickers, yeah, the yeah. pastor, and well, she's the bishop there. And um, yeah, so I do get an opportunity because I just love worship. I love worship. So that's just always a part of me and deep within my heart. So it's still there, but jazz is more in the direction that I am going in. Yeah. But, you know, um, I was listening when you just said the, you're, you're more versatile now. Mm -hmm. And that is something that can, is a, can teach as well because... We have to be versatile to reach different types of people, even in our conversations. Um, I'm learning that as well. We can't just focus on how we grew up or whatever. We need to be able to talk with all kinds of people from all walks of life. And so our art mm -hmm. forms and our creativity has to go out there as well. So yes, honey, that jazz, <laughs> listen, that's an easy integration, though. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Church music, mm -hmm. jazz, and mm -hmm. soul. You, hey, that's yeah, the big goal uh, of it anyway. Right. That's the whole mm -hmm. foundation of it all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, just like I asked you about the photography, I wonder, did this vocal creativity that you have start as a little girl? Yes. I yes. figure, yeah. Yes, I <laughs> that do. was one that was given to you from yes. birth. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was. I mean, definitely a God um, a given gift. And um, um, some like to refer to me as a contralto. I might not meet that standard, mm -hmm. but I have a very rich bottom and I, and I actually use it to preserve the spiritual. Mm -hmm. um, I, also, I ha also have a project called The Journey to Freedom. Mm -hmm. And so that would be kind of, um, I am a, uh, one of the ancestral voices of today. And um, so a lot of people call on me for spirituals. And, and, and so when I think about that and, and the love that I have for um, the stand, um, jazz standards, they all just work. It just works um, together. It's, it's it a does. pretty dope thing. But so that I am very known for my a very rich and colorful bottom of my um, register. Mm -hmm. Well, I have heard some of your pieces and honey, <laughs> Mm. there's an anointing thank you on your voice it, it, it is it is and i you know i was just blown away because you said nothing <laughs> <laughs> to be about you were singing and yeah. you know when you did the the photo shoot and i don't know how i i don't mm -hmm. know i think it was something that i clicked on or something and i said that's diana <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's the fun part, just being you. It, yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I let my daughter hear that. She's like, oh, my. Amen. Your voice is beautiful. And, you. Um, and, you know, because I went to an HBCU, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> most of my musical background is rooted in Negro spirituals. Oh, wow. Okay. So, because, you know, going to an um, African-American institution, Mm -hmm. That is what the focus was. Yes. You know, in choir, you know, you, you're going to sing all of these um, spirituals. Mm -hmm. And every now and then, our professor, conductor, Glenn Halsey. Ooh, up, I knew he was going to say it. I just, I just knew it. <laughs> I love me some Glenn Halsey. Oh, okay. Lord, Glenn Halsey let me tell you something. <laughs> that man, let me tell you, that man could be a thorn in your side. But he, <laughs> but he did it in love. Yes. And I am so thankful yes. that I was able to sit under him. Yes. I, I had conducting class from him. Wow. And he could make music come up off the page yes. with his hands. Yes. I mean, it, it, that's, I mean, I couldn't even, nobody can emulate it. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen anybody do it yet. No, 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 he was a master. Oh, I mean, he his he just do this. 
and we knew what to do. Yes. It, was, it was like, he just do this. Yes. It wasn't, it, he didn't do all these big motions. It was just, he, he let the music talk. Yes. 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 But every now and then he would let us do a gospel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He didn't let us do them too often. That much. <laughs> <laughs> I, love I, awesome, yeah. I remember one incident, and if any of my Brown Knight sisters and brothers are listed to this, yeah. they will know exactly what I'm talking about if they were in choir. Yeah. I remember going to a church. Uh, I can't remember. I think it was for an or something, but we went to St. Philip's AME Church mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. sing for this program. And he messed around and let us sing a gospel. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, like dominoes. I know you told he, it. Passing out and shouting. I and I, I remember when we got down to the uh, uh, basement to eat, mm. he came up to us and said, don't y'all ever do that again. <laughs> I, mean, we, I mean, the spirit was so high. Yes, yes. Um, but that is what the the love that I have for my HBCU, Mars Brown. Yes, yes. Part of that is because of Glenn Halsey and the type of music that he introduced us to and the way he introduced it. Yes, yes, yes. I was able to experience um, Glenn Halsey um, in the Philharmonic Society. Uh-huh, yeah, um, yeah. And boy, was he a gift. I mean, and the students just love him. He's the funniest thing ever. Oh, Lord. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, he would give me the blues. I would love it. we go back and forth. <laughs> yes, but uh, I mean, the what we learned, uh, you can't, it's just, you can't even articulate it no. because of so much. You and, know, yeah. and right now, I am getting emotional just thinking about it because we are approaching um when he went on to glory yeah yeah it was yeah. around this time um mm -hmm. and i remember we all got together and and um went to celebrate his life mm -hmm. but um he was he was a part of my life even after college and into teaching he yes. would come and listen to my choirs and touch them up to get them ready for festival for me Yes. Um, so I, that's one person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I am just thankful God let me be yes. a part of whatever he was doing. Yes. yes. And so what, did you, um, go to college around here in this area? Went to Clark Atlanta. Clark, so, oh yes. <laughs> he, he was at Clark Atlanta for a little while. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I spent some time there. Um, while Mary, uh, Dr. Uh, Mary Frances Early. Uh, Lord have mercy. Listen, look at all these connections. Yeah. Let me tell you something. <laughs> this man is somebody else that you know. Because I think I saw your mutual friends, um, Dr. Sharon Willis. Let me tell you something. You know a lot of my connections. <laughs> This the project that I'm telling you about, Journey to Freedom. Freedom. Yes. Um, Dr. Willis narrated this project. Our last time doing it publicly was right before the pandemic um, at the Apex Museum. And boy, she is bad. Yeah. 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 And Mary Frances Early, let me tell you about her. Mm. When um, I was a teacher, um, student teaching actually, mm -hmm. um, at Whiteford Elementary School in Atlanta under Roslyn Lewis. Okay. Mary Frances Early was our uh, fine arts director of Atlanta Public Schools. Okay. Okay. He okay. came out to watch me teach and to give pointers. Back then, it was different. You know, your your older teachers really invested in yeah. um, training you to be a good teacher. Okay. And she would give me pointers and she was always there, always yeah. there for advice. Uh, matter of fact, I talked to her not too long ago. She is yeah. still looking good and doing good. Yes. Um, awesome. But, awesome. Yeah. You, you know, a lot of my connections. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is, this is the connected point. That part. <laughs> yes. Now yeah. I do want to open this up. I don't want to hold you too long, but you know you're gonna to have to sing now. Cause see the audience, they don't they don't know what I've been I heard. <laughs> okay, okay. You're gonna to have to give us something um 
whatever your choice is, acapella, whatever you would like, give us something to inspire. To inspire. To inspire. Well, Dr. Marcy, in the times that we are living in, I know that, I know this is a, a Christian platform. Um, and so uh, because of the times we're in, I know that if nothing else, we need the Lord to walk with us. Mm. And so if, if, if I, I can give you a little piece of walk with me, Lord. Yes, yes. It's, it's some walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. And while I'm on this tedious journey, oh, I need you, Jesus, to walk. I am um, very intentional about using uh, my gifts to connect with others mm -hmm. and uh, that they may go higher as well. Um, I, you know, uh, right now, um, recently, I started a YouTube channel okay. and I haven't posted on it because God's got me in a place of kind of um, meditating over mm -hmm. how to move forward. Mm -hmm. But I do have a couple of videos on it. And I want to share a little bit about it because... Yes. Um, I know that the, it is what's going on in the earth, uh, that it plays a huge part in it. In, in addition to what we talked about in terms of um, the uh, knowing and, and um, how the universe speaks, basically, I, um, my YouTube channel is called Earth Journey Ascend. Mm -hmm. And I, the YouTube channel was started because I, um, I started seeing numbers. And um, it's, it's, it's the most amazing, almost like um, a phenomenon. Uh -huh. um, and I would see them so much. I would see them so much. And I used to be into oratory and like um, international Toastmasters and all mm -hmm, these things. Mm -hmm. But I, um, the, the numbers suggested that I needed to speak a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And so once I went to, to research what is going on. Why am I seeing these numbers mm -hmm. so much? Um, I found out in my research online that it's, it is something that the um, is it, it's happening in the earth. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, there's a community of people that are seeing these numbers. And so I wanted to share uh, my experiences about signs and um, and numbers because numbers have been uh, a universal language mm -hmm. um, since the beginning of times, basically. And, but, but I talked to a, a man who studies angels and numbers because mm -hmm. these numbers, based on my research, are called angel numbers, right? Mm -hmm. And so someone told me that um, I, it could be my, um, I guess, maybe spiritual foundation mm -hmm. that could have awakened them in me. Mm -hmm. um, but we all see them. 
is they just have to be awakened. Okay. And so I shared that journey um, on my YouTube page and I wanted to share it with you mm -hmm. um, because I know that people are going to benefit from this journey. I was going a little bit backwards in my story because mm -hmm. I... I, I needed to really share what these numbers mean. What, why did I come to the conclusion that, you know, I, I see them and that it was necessary to put them uh, in, um, put my journey on a public platform? Um, it's because so many people are afraid of telling when they experience things that are not normal. Normal. Or, yeah, or what one would consider to be normal. And um, I just thought it, and, and it's teaching me so much, in, in, and, um, and there is a shift in the atmosphere right now, in the mm -hmm. spiritual realm. And so um, I just if you get some time definitely go out and take a peek at that that page like i said it's called earth journey ascend earth and journey ascend. you are going to be blown away by the experiences that i'm sharing and it, because it's it's blowing me away and mm -hmm. everyone who's around me because i talk about it so much mm -hmm. it's been going on for about a year uh -huh. and and but the whole time i did not know what the numbers were and so now that I am a little bit, have a better understanding of what they are, um, I'm going to, you know, take my time in getting back out there and share that part of the journey. But, but there are some gifts that are far beyond um, what we could imagine with them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There are some things that are being birthed, and I believe through each and every one of us. And it's just going to take us to be uh, intentional about seeking what God, the purpose that God has for us in using them. Well, yeah. you know, I have a friend, <clears throat> since we're talking about that, a very close friend of mine. Um, she sees things. I mean, uh, the best way I can describe it is she sees things in nature or um, particularly the sky. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, she'll send me pictures periodically and say, what do you see in here? And I'm so, sometimes now I can see what she's talking about. And sometimes I'm like, what am I supposed to be seeing? Okay, I'm supposed okay. to say, keep looking. Okay. Keep looking. Uh, she'll send me, a, she'll be driving her car and see something and take a picture of it and send, send it to me say look 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 mm -hmm. and and um here recently she was seeing the same thing over and over over and she would send me pictures here it is again marcy here it is again here it is again and we came to the conclusion after after uh seeing this all the time that god is moving in accelerated motion Yes. Okay. It, because what she was seeing was symbolizing acceleration. Yes. Okay. And so she and I would be talking and scriptures would start falling to, to explain what yes. we're So I know exactly what yes. you are talking about. I love it. Um, and, and people, um, God speaks to people in different ways. Yes. I know with me, um, he speak, speaks to me through connections. And that's why I know he told me to call this connecting point because I will see things in, conne in connections. I will know who to connect, you know, for what Love purpose. It. And so um, we just have to pay attention to how he speaks to us. Now, the numbers, are you seeing physical numbers or are you just seeing them in your imagination or how are you seeing them yes physical yes. physical so, um, I, um, example i was writing down the road and and i take pictures of them too uh-huh because uh -huh. i want to be, i don't want to feel crazy number one no, no. <laughs> but, this here but, yeah. no ma'am but i um the other day i was riding down the road and i saw um 999 mm -hmm. um on the uh, attack mm -hmm. and that was directly in front of me. Uh -huh. And I was on the expressway. And sure enough, a car passes me to the a van passes me to the left of me and had 999 on it too. You know. Um, um, I get 333 all the time. Nine nine uh means that you're coming to the end of a cycle. Of a cycle, yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you see it in the uh, triples, it's just pretty much saying that it's amplified. And they have so many more meanings to it because it's, um, um, I guess everyone's giving their 
perception of how they perceive it. And then they have the scholars that have, mm -hmm. you know have researched it and and in numerology. Mm -hmm. um, and so they it's a lot of different reasons, but it always comes back down to whatever that master number is nine. Mm -hmm. And so that would be the end of a cycle. And sure enough, I believe I am in the end of a cycle. Okay, an era. Uh, listen. Listen, um, and, I, and I share this on the video because I ended up back down at the community that I live in now and, mm -hmm. and um, um, from 10 years ago. Um, and from the, it, I moved here at the beginning of the pandemic. I'm, I'm just at a year. And um, I lived in this community 10 years ago. And then so spirit started to lead me back to journals. And that's why it's so good to journal. Yeah. So, Ooh. Yeah. A lot Journaling of Journaling is powerful. Yes, yeah. I write the times down on mm -hmm. when I journal, and a lot of the times that I wrote down, and I, now that I know, I go and look, I looked up the times, and it was so crazy because the meaning of the time was very um, relative to the um, the journal entry that I wrote. ah, and so it's it's just so it's amazing. I know it's it everything even the ups and the downs that we're going through in this life the good and the bad mm -hmm. everything is working for our good yes it is everything is working if we're good. in god's purpose yes yes that's the key yes yes you have to be in his purpose yes yes and then you will begin to see things are working together for your good yes yes yes, yes. oh honey listen you and I have to talk further, <laughs> but mm -hmm. I, I do understand. I'm, I'm the type of person where I grew up in church uh, as a little girl, you know, going to church every Sunday, you know. Um, however, the older I get, I realize that it is more about the relationship I have with God yes. rather than going to a building every Sunday, going through a routine. Yes. To say I've been to church. Yes. Yes. And that is the reason why many of uh, those who impact everyone who's impacted by the pandemic, but particularly the church mm -hmm. did not know how to cope with these times. That I we're did. Yeah. <laughs> a, a lot of people, did, and that's a beautiful thing. Yes. I too. You know, yeah. but a lot of people did not know how to cope with these times and, and uh, because they don't understand that it's relationship. It's, it's nothing, relationship. has nothing to do with the building because you are God in expression. The church is in you. You know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> so, the church, we are the church. Yeah. And if we could ever get uh, people to totally understand that, Yes. then we will be in a much better place and then we'll be more apt to go out in our communities out of the four walls of the church mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and serve the community yes yes so yeah. you know that that's a whole nother conversation yeah a whole nother conversation <laughs> a whole nother conversation but while we talk about um community because i am about to start um um, my planning, I, I did not do it um, in 2020. I mm -hmm. will go back and do it. I will do it this year. Um, but I have a, and, and um, our mutual friend has participated in mm -hmm. it before. And I'd love to have any of uh, you, your viewers, to just join, join in the endeavor. Um, but I, for eight years, have done a, um, a outreach during Christmas time yeah. called um, Friends Who Serve. And, and the Challenge 300, we started at the Challenge 300, and that challenge was to collect 300 toys, friends, okay. friends coming together to collect those 300 toys. Well, er, we started at 300, we exceeded the 300, then we went to the Challenge 500, and well, we ended up, um, our last time, we collected over 1,400 toys and serviced over 125 families, and oh. so... Um, th that would be one of the outreach endeavors that I do, and um, and it's a, and it's a space where you can give back while at the same time you get to come out and just be a part of of, of, of a beautiful thing to to give and to just put smiles on the faces of youth. And it's not this is not a program of someone who. Um, 
of people who just don't have. These are for working mothers as well. So there is no criteria. Um, you just have to show up with your children and let them come and pick through all these wonderful toys. Uh -huh. and, yeah, it is a beautiful, a really well, beautiful. Please thing. don't let me miss that. Yeah, I'll make sure. I'll make yeah, sure. Yeah, make sure you make sure you notify me. <laughs> yeah, I will. I, will. I would like to be a part of that. Um, yeah. You know that that's the beautiful thing about community and helping community is that yeah. one beautiful thing about it is that you are being fulfilled, filled up as well. Yeah. You know, it feels wonderful to be able to give uh, to the community. Be yeah. a cheerful giver, though. <laughs> Let something me make that, that clear. <laughs> something about that cheerful. <laughs> Cheer, God honors cheerful givers. Don't go out there and you don't want to do it complaining now. Yes, if you, if yes, you're a cheerful yes. giver, give. If you can't give toys, donate yes. so that toys can be purchased. Yes. But yes. I please don't let me forget that. That's I'm something sure. that um, the nonprofit Integrative Arts Creations can partner with you on. So. Yes. Please let me know. Well, Diana Nicole, yes, this yes. was beautiful. Yes. I appreciate you. I am looking forward to wonderful things from you. Yes, thank you. Yes, yes, yes. And can you again share with the audience how, I know you told me you don't do that photography too much, but you know we got to. Yes, <laughs> y'all, yes, she told me. Oh. <laughs> It gets overwhelming. <laughs> but listen, we're gonna open up the we're gonna open this up. Yes, ma'am. Because you, you have a gift that the world needs to see. Thank you. Okay. So Thank can you. you let the audience know um how to contact you for um yeah. photography um services, graphic design, or y'all heard her singing. Now yeah. come on. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, y'all heard that. So any of those areas, how can they contact you? Yes, um, well, I you can go to my um uh, an email um uh created to the number to inspire c2i at gmail.com created the number to inspire at gmail.com and here on um June 15th. Uh, June 15th, I am going to relaunch my website and it is called the, uh, the Memoirs of Diana Nicole, the okay. Memoirs of Diana Nicole. And you'll be able to find, you know, some of my art there and be able to connect with me there. But right now I'm taking emails and my um, Instagram um, um, and follow me on Instagram and social media at, media at it's Diana Nicole. But yeah, so right now, in June, 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 uh, June fifteenth, you'll be able to um, launch the web, visit the website, and but now go to create it to the number two inspire c the number two i at gmail .com, and you'll be able to reach me there. All right, y'all heard it, and I'm telling you, I put my stamp boom <laughs> on Diana Nicole. She's good at what she does, and like I said, a beautiful spirit and professional. Okay, you know, that's what I'm just going to say this. That's one thing, African-American community, you know, we'll say in a minute, I don't want to deal with African-American, they're not professional. Well, she's not one of them. She's professional. Thank you. Okay? <laughs> Thank you. That is a big deal. It I is. You know, that's important. Good customer service and professional. Now, yes. Yes. just because yes. you're African-American don't mean we're going to support you if, yes. you if you don't have your stuff up right and you go around cheating people. And not completing the work. Agreed. But, but if you're doing things decent and in order, guess yeah. what? Mm -hmm. We want to connect with you. We will do. We will help you out. I love it. Now, I love it. like I say every week, if you would like to be a part of this platform, you can reach out to me at integrativeartscreations.com. You can reach out at integrativearts at att.net. You can reach out Facebook. Integrative Arts Creations, uh, Instagram, Integrative Arts Creations, Twitter, Arts Integrate. And so, and we have another platform. It's a private platform on Facebook called the Connecting Point 
for Creators group, of which Diana Nicole is a part of, and myself, of course. Um, and it's just a place, a community of creators of all kind, because we're all creators. Yes. Just have different avenues for it. It's yes. creators of all kind who are interested in inspiring others, sharing their ideas. Yes and transforming the world. Now, it's also a, a place where we celebrate each other, okay? Yes. Because I think that's important. So we do celebrate each other and what we're doing. And it's okay to shout out yourself there. And, and we drop some um, words of inspiration or songs in there every day to get your day started. So look us up, the Connecting Point for Creators Group, and come on, we'd love to have you join us because iron sharpens iron. Okay, thank you again, Diana Nicole. Listen, and thank you too, Dr. Marcy. I don't take it for granted that I'm here today. And I'm oh, it is my pleasure. And audience, until we get to see you again, peace and blessings.